Hello, fishing freaks. Welcome to today's little afternoon vlog. This is going to be kind of a, a short one, I suppose, since we only have a few hours of daylight left. And I think I've located some. I've caught a few. They haven't been giants yet, but I think what's going on is um, I found a good spawning pocket. Water's really dirty. Can't see the fish, though. Water 60 degrees. Just had our full moon. We're post front right now. So we're dealing with high pressure bluebird skies, but I think these bigger fish are backed off a little bit. I've been catching some smaller males, like two to three pounders in um, you know, less than three feet of water. And I'm gonna try just, uh, just fishing in that area and then backing out a little bit. So five to eight feet of water and see what happens. Hopefully we catch a giant. Gonna be fishing a, a little creature bait situation today, a little baby brush hog since it's high, high pressure. And I got a couple of different variations of, of creatures going on here. So let's get on the bank, let's get to fishing. Just missed one. Hammered it, bit it in half. Hmm. I wonder what that was. Probably a male bass. I'm trying to follow the break line, the first and second little drops. If you look at a bank, especially when it's down, you can really kind of figure it out. But when the lake's at regular pool, you'll see the, it looks like a little stair step. Sometimes it's only a couple feet, maybe it's only a foot, but those bigger females will kind of hang out if there's not a lot of cover around so I don't have a lot of stumps or grass or anything in this lake I'm fishing so they'll just get on banks and they'll just kind of follow those drops and when the conditions are right they'll really move up onto the shallow flats where those males are. There's not a doubt in my mind that there is a fish right in there. Oh there he is. He's got it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. That's a big one. There we go, baby. Oh yeah. That's the one we're looking for there. Oh, don't spit it. Ah. Ah, oh, man, this fish just took off. There was a like a small school of shad and they just scattered when this fish hit my bait. It was so awesome. It's not a giant, but gosh, we'll take it. That's a good one. That is a good one. Right there, folks. Yes. Man, just barely got that. See that it's right in the corner on that brush hog bait and I let him take it let it take it just a second so it could uh, get the bait because that last one I had just just like peck, 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 peck. It's like they're crushing it, but I don't know what they're doing. The fish was up there shallow though, real shallow. That's awesome. All right, see ya hog. It was fun catching you. I'm gonna put a little bit of chartreuse on my tail here. Put them in the juice. Oh, and they're good. Oh my gosh, that one smoked it. It's just a little one. It was just like a boom. I don't know if you guys can see my rod tip. That's just a tiny one. He hit it like a very aggressive strike on this little, this little uh, creature bait. Oh, man. If I hadn't hooked him, I would have told you guys that that was a big one. It's a cool little bait. It's not, it's not a brush hog. It's uh, some sort of similar lure, but it's got like some craw flappers on it. 
instead. It's got it's got flaps up front and it's got curl tails in the back. You know, I, I came up shallow and got that that one decent bite, so I'm like, mm, man, I wonder wonder if some of them are pulled up. It's the mind games right now. Going into spring, I wouldn't stress getting up early. I strategically wanted to fish this afternoon just because we just had a cold front and the water's gonna be the warmest in the afternoon. That's often when the fish will come up shallow. You know, it works out really good, you know, if you're in school or you got work, you can just go right after you get out, get that peak time of the day. There is a nice isolated patch of cover right in the middle of this pocket and that just looks too sexy. There should be a seven pounder in there. Oh, there was. That was a big wake right there that just... Mm. Guys, you see an isolated bush or patch of reeds or patch of grass or anything like that in the springtime where there's a lot of the other type of cover around or that same type of cover around and you just get that isolated piece, focus on it. Oh my God, what? The freaking crap. Guys, I popped it up over the stick and this fish like sucked it in, had it and just didn't even move like, like a freaking freight train gorilla. Just boom, like brick wall. I thought I was stuck. There he is again. Got him. Oh no, he's coming at me. That's oh, a big one. Oh yeah, it's the same fish. It's the same fish. Oh yeah. It's that same fish, he just hit it and sat there. Oh my gosh. Come here, baby. Oh my goodness, guys. The fish was probably on a bed because it just sat there. There we go. Not a giant, but I brought it over this log and it just kind of, it kind of sat there for a minute. I was like, do I have a fish? And I pulled back and it let go and I saw the boil and I threw it back in there again and I just let it sit. Like they want it really, really slow. So I guess they're, I guess they're on the bank doing their thing. That's a fat one though. It's a nice three and a half pound fish. Beautiful fish. Love you, baby. I'd lick you, but you got, you got lesions on you. That's a great one. Great fish. It's just very methodical fishing right now, guys. Just seeing little pieces of cover, throw to it, and I'll just let it sit in there. I'll just drag that creature bait in there, and I'll just let it sit, and I'll shake it. And the bigger ones, they just, they just kind of it just gets squishy. This bank that I'm fishing has a softer bottom to it now. Where I was catching them, I had a harder bottom, it was rockier. So, I'll go see if I can find some more hard bottom. All right, we're gonna make a few flips up in here. Let's see what we got. This nice little tree looks tasty. So I'm actually using a uh, 3 16 ounce weight. That's great for fishing thick, shallow cover. It doesn't really drag down in there like a 5 16 or a 3 8 or a half. So you can get it through the cover better. And you don't need a real heavy weight when you're fishing super shallow anyways just enough to get through the wind and make some bottom contact. And I'm not messing around here on the line today. I've got 25 pound fluorocarbon leader. 
with the usual 50 pound braid. I've got a pretty heavy rod. Truthfully, this hook is probably not strong enough to hold up to what I've got going on here if I really was wrenching on a fish, but we'll get to that heartbreak if it comes. Oh my gosh, you had it. It's running with it. Okay, let's get back after it. Oh my gosh, that was a freaking big one right there. What the heck is that all about? Oh. Oh, God. Holy crap. Oh, my. I couldn't catch up to him. Just smashed it and took off. This is kind of a slow bite, but it's consistent. There's one. Good one. They're coming right at me. Ah, what the heck are these fish on, crack? That's just a little one. Did you guys see that? <laughs> he had me hung up. Hung up for a second. None of them have really eaten it good. He had me hung up for a second. I got him out and he just screams right at the boat, man. I've got a high speed gear ratio reel. I could barely keep up with him. Wow, one just came up right there. That was a big back on that thing. Are you joking me? That was a five pounder. That was the back of a five pound green gorilla. Oh my gosh, that one hammered it. Oh my gosh. What in the world? It was like, boom. nothing there. Oh, there's one. Oh! That was a big one. Could not catch up to it. I need like a 12 to one gear ratio reel right now, guys. All right. Well, I guess it's time for me to call it quits, guys. I'm almost thinking about coming back here tomorrow just because bigger fish are moving up and I just want to put my time in. I know if I put in enough casts, I'll catch a big one. But I don't think I lost any that were really over five today. At least I hope not. I had probably four bites that just, I couldn't get them in. Like I couldn't catch up to them enough. They were just screaming like banshees. The creature bait was really good though. Um, this little guy right here I was using. Uh, if you want to check those bad boys out, I'll put a link in the description. If you liked any of the tips I gave in this video, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, guys. We're going fishing again soon. Ooh. We've all been there before. You run out of gas. It's not a good situation. Luckily, found these guys on the way in. They shot up a flare. First time I've ever seen that out on the water. So I shot over here and I'm gonna tow these guys in. Never a good situation running out of gas, but hey, you know what? I actually did that not too long ago. If you guys missed that video, um, I ran out of gas. Luckily, I was really close to the boat ramp so I could get in with my trolling motor. These guys, they were way out here. Maybe you can help me out someday. Maybe I'll help you out someday when we're out there on the water. So as you can tell, we are the only ones still left at this ramp. That could have been really bad if I never saw that, if I never saw them. And I never would have saw them if they didn't have a flare gun. Like, I'm gonna go get me a flare gun now because that thing seriously just saved them from having to stay out here all night and who knows what. I don't even have one in my boat, guys. If you don't have a flare gun and you're on some big lakes, you might wanna get one. Pretty, uh, pretty sweet. Plus they're fun to shoot, right? So another thing, another, I'm gonna quit talking. I just gotta tell you this crazy story because it's weird how this happened. I was running the lake today and I've run this lake a lot and the water's down. I'm going around this hazard buoy because I know there's a rock pile and I'm going around, I'm like a hundred yards away from where the hazard buoy is and another freaking rock pile is sitting there and I never saw it until I was like 30 feet in front of it. 
and I just trimmed the motor up. I was like, oh no, oh no. Like probably going 30 or 40 miles an hour. My skag skims the bottom, but it's like sand. I go in between the freaking rocks. There's two freaking huge rocks and I go in between them. How the heck does that happen? Like, I, and then, you know, these guys show up. Of course I'm gonna help him because I'm just thanking the lucky stars today, guys. So it was one of those situations where my lower unit should have been gone. It's still intact. And then I'm the only one left on the lake. And, you know, these guys have a flare gun. Uh, so there's some lucky stuff going on on the lake today. I just wanted to share that with you because, you know, it's crazy what happens on the water sometimes. And you just get to thinking, you're like, man, I must live under a lucky star. Guys, I am done talking. Next time I see you, we're going to be fishing. And I am I think I'm going to come back out here and try to catch some toads. So thanks for watching the video, guys. And I'll see you on the next one.